Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. We are back with another episode of Bammers brought to you by the Mercedes-Benz Tech Program. I am Matt Scalisi, joined as always by Ben Flanagan, my co-host. And we got a special guest this week. Uh, he's, a, he's an old friend of the AL.com sports crew, uh, but he's a name that everybody in the Alabama fan community will know. We are joined by John Parker Wilson, former Alabama quarterback, current Alabama radio analyst. Uh, JP, how you been, man? It's been a while. I know, man. I've, uh, I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys doing? We're good. We, you know, it's, it's been a weird few years, but, uh, I, I, it's, it's good to have everything kind of feeling normal again this season and, and, uh, seeing everybody back out there on the trail again. You, you know, I, I, I know for you, you, you had to deal with probably your own set of challenges last year, but now you're, you're back out there doing your, your prep for games as you get ready to to you know be a, an analyst during a game live during a game with Eli out there in the booth every week. I I I, I want to kind of start us off today because this is a week that you know I think there are there's a lot of effort that goes into these this last non conference game every year to try and keep everybody on their on their toes, try and keep everybody sharp. Uh, when it's very easy to have a letdown for you personally, John Parker, how is your what is your preparation like? Is it is it more challenging for you to get ready for a game like this as a broadcaster than maybe it is for for the sort of big showdown rivalry type games like last week? I um, it's not more challenging to get motivated to do it. It is just it's more challenging in general because there's you know, there's not as much information uh, about our New Mexico State that's out there just floating around than, you know, LSU or Auburn or Georgia. So you just got to do a little more digging and, and more research. Um, but I think we got to prepare more for these games because, uh, you know, it, it's um, it's just going to be a different game than last week or a big SEC game, right? So you got to have more to talk about, more prepared. Uh, and, and just be ready to go a lot of different directions depending on how the game goes. So probably more preparation for these games, just with all the, all the kind of outside things that you just, you're just not used to, but um, it's uh, it's, it's our next game too. So we just get, we get ready. Like it, try to get ready like every week, um, you know, have everything done and then be ready, to, especially, you know, early on Saturday, if you don't have it done by Friday evening, you're just not going to get a lot more done on Saturday. It's 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 interesting that you you say, you know, you you kind of alluded to it there that this is a game that for you as a broadcaster, uh, you might have to spend the last couple of quarters or so really really searching for stuff to talk about. Um, you you don't have a backup that you, you, unlike unlike when you're a player, you don't get to go spend yeah. the last quarter of the game on the bench. Yeah, I mean exactly right. So. We've got to, you know, know more of our players, and we know our players, but you know they, they're going to substitute players in too that probably wouldn't um, you see. And I know they don't have a conference, but in a typical game for for New Mexico State, so yeah, you do have to have just uh, more things to talk about in a game like this. Like you know, last week against LSU, it came down to the very last play, so we're into it and we're focused on the game. And this one might uh, might be a little bit different, and you got to got to get ready for that. Yeah, third fourth quarter of, of that game kind of dragging out and, you know, run off the right tackle, run off the right tackle pull time after time after time, just gets a little boring to listen to. So we try to keep it fresh, add new things, new ideas, new thoughts. John Parker, uh, I think it's been a great broadcast all season. Like y'all have kind of a four man crew going with you and Eli and Rashad and Chris. It's been really fun to listen to. I want to stay on the topic of motivation real quick because people often characterize games like this Saturdays against New Mexico State as cupcake games. And whether it's an FCS school or a smaller FBS opponent, opponent, people think that Alabama and other major programs are just going to roll right through these teams. And that happens more often than not, but it's not always the case. So I wonder when you're a player, what is your mindset with non-conference games like this? How did you and your teammates stay motivated going into them? Well, I think it's different. I think every year is different and every game is different. Kind of where your team's at, the success you've had, um, things you're trying to improve on. So motivation, I think it's – you have to look no further than just – it happens. It happens a lot um, of teams like this upsetting, you know, top 10, top 20 teams. 
that, you know, New Mexico State's won one game this season. But it happens. So you have to get ready for it. And I think as a player, you get it. By this time of the season, you're even the, the true freshmen are in their routine. And you just try to stick to that routine, right? And you try not to cut any corners. And you try to prepare even the same way you did last week. Okay, if I'm going to, you know, wake up at 6 a.m. and and go to the um, – to eat breakfast and then go get my body worked on or do some kind of rehab or something, ice tub, cold tub. You try to do the same thing for this week. And that just maintains throughout the year. And, you know, this week you just try not to cut the corner. So if last week you, you know, you got an extra thigh massage because you got a little bruise going on. You want to do that this week. You don't want to say, well, you know, I'll do it next week. You just got to keep it going. And I think, you know, I think where we're just the Alabama teams at in this game, I think it falls at a really good time. You know, we lost against A&M, had a great game against Mississippi State, played pretty well against Tennessee. Defense really showed up last week. Offense is struggling a little bit. So defense is trying to keep their needle pointed up. It's been really, really good for the past two or three games. And then offense is trying to get back to where we were because we've been a really good offense and struggled this past week um, running the football. We know Coach Saban kind of is famously keeps – keeps his process very consistent from year to year. And we know that he's always uh, spending a lot of time talking about not letting down in games like this. But just in terms of kind of the specifics of it, John Parker, have you noticed any kind of change maybe in, in, in the way that he, the way that he delivers that message to players from the time that you were on the team until now is, is there, is there anything different about how he sort of approaches keeping the players motivated for a game like this? You know, honestly, I don't think so. Um, I get to go back to practice every now and then I've, 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 I've been around it and it's shockingly similar. I mean, even like the, the practice periods are very similar. I mean, it works. It's worked for what, 15 years now. Um, so it's, but it is just like it was then. It's always a struggle week in and week out of, of keeping people motivated, of keeping them um, at this point, well, we're, we're eight, eight games in the season, right? Four or five weeks of training camp. So it's, this is a grind time of getting really to the, this is beyond the second half of the season. And it's just human nature to let your mind wander to lose focus, whether you're playing football, whether you're doing what we do or working or raising a family, it's easy to like lose focus. So, it's just reiterating time after time after time of we got to keep your focus, whether it's Monday getting ready for practice or it's Saturday running the tuttle and everywhere in between. Um, and if you don't do that, then you lose the game. I mean, we saw that against A&M. We were heavily favorites in that game. Um, you know, A&M was coming off back-to-back losses, and then they come up and upset us. So I think that was proof of point right there that you got to do it right all week. Um, and that's what makes a championship team. And if you want to get past Auburn and if you want to get past Georgia and you want to make it to the finals, that's what it takes. And it doesn't matter who you're playing. And I know that sounds like coach talk, but that's, that's the way it's got to be. Or else, um, you know, you lose a couple games and, and, and don't play in the playoffs. Can you take us inside the locker room at halftime, say like when an Alabama is, is maybe struggling or not playing up to the standard that they're used to against uh, a team like I think back to 2016 when Chattanooga led Alabama after one quarter or when the Citadel had the game tied at halftime yeah. in 2018? Like what's the message from Coach Saban like in the team's leadership when those doors close? Like how does the team regroup and adjust before you hit the field again? You know, I think Coach Saban does a really good job of, of going in unscripted and not having, you know, talking points that he wants to talk about. He really does a good job of sensing pregame, you know, leaving the hotel, the pregame walkthroughs, coming to the stadium, stretching, getting ready, and then energy and effort in the first half. So sometimes you might need a good butt chewing, and that's what it takes. Or sometimes, you know, you've done everything right. It's just not not clicking the right way. So, you know, I, I think if you are struggling in those kind of games – you know, Citadel's a little different because they're running a funky offense. And I think it was, what, 10 to 10 at halftime in that game? Um, you know, I think at that point, you try to get the offense going. Like, why are we not you know, executing like we're supposed to? So I think he gauges the team and the attitude. And then, then you know, his message is according. And, and probably a lot of times it is getting on guys, but that's what they need. But sometimes, you know, it's like, okay, we're, we're facing this triple option. You know, we, we, you've never seen it. Most of these guys never see it in high school anymore. 
um, much less in college. So at that point, it's probably focusing on those things, the keys and, and what they talked about all week. Um, but the halftime's quick. I mean, it happens quick. And, you know, you, you spend a lot of time on X's and O's with, you know, your group, whether offense or defense, and then you come together at the end. And that's kind of when the, when the message comes in. But, um, you know, it's just uh, – it's crazy. Every week's different and every team's different. So I think what he does really good job of connecting with those players and understanding what makes them tick. So one, one thing to, to kind of pull back now that you're not, that, that you've kind of seen the game from a different level um, as a broadcaster and as somebody who understands kind of the media part of this and the business part of it now, you know, the, the motivation aside for a game like this, there's, there's been a lot of conversation about, the future of college football, particularly in the Power Five. We know there's lots of conversations going on about what college football is going to look like a few years from now. Games like this, I think there's a lot of debate about, you know, what really is the benefit to Alabama. There's there's plenty of risks out there. Like you mentioned, the risk of possibly losing a game like this. Guys are still going out there and having to play 60 minutes of a football game, you can get a guy hurt in a game like this. We've seen that sure. plenty of times over the years. Do you, do you, when you kind of look at the the cost and the benefit of Alabama playing a game like this, and Nick Saban's talked about it a little bit too about his feelings about it. Do do you think that do you think that games like this are are something that won't be uh, around as much in the future? And is that a good or a bad thing in your opinion? I think we're. I think college football is just it's kind of trending toward that i think last year during covid probably accelerated it i mean 10 sec games was pretty fun right every week was <laughs> was big um i loved it and i i think i think there you know, there's a lot of risk a lot of reward to these games too or probably more risk than reward so um i think i think it is trending that way you know i would love to you know look at you look at the nfl compared to college and it, it we can kind of do it, but I mean, it's, it's not the same, but NFL plays 16 games that are all pretty competitive, that are all relative. Um, and, you know, these games, I think it's, I think it's good for the players. Like right now, this comes at a really good time for Alabama after struggling a few weeks ago, A&M struggling against LSU, like you can clean up a lot. So there is a lot of reward to this game of going out and not worrying about your opponent, like you're supposed to do every week, but just worrying about you and going out and doing what your coach to do. Um, but I think, you know, we've, we've already seen it now. We're, we're doing a lot of home and homes in the, in the next, what we've got them over a decade out. I think, um, I think as a fan, I love it. I think as a player, you'd love to go to Austin, Texas to play or, 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 you know, South Bend or, um, Madison, Wisconsin. I, I think there's fun. I think you don't get a lot of opportunities to play those teams unless it's a bowl. Right. Um, and I, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's good for everybody. I think that's the way we're going. But, you know, I know it's a huge benefit to these small schools, right, of, of, of generating income and revenue that they can use to grow their program and grow their university. So there's definitely benefits to both. And I think, I think they'll find a way to, 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 you know, if we're not – I don't know how much money that New Mexico State gets to come play us, but if, if we do increase it and, and, you know, find a way to help those teams out, I, I think they'd, they'd be able to do that. But, um, you know, as a player, you just – you can use this time to try to get better. And I think the good teams do that. And the bad teams, you know, they'll go out and get by and struggle and, and get people hurt. And then, um, you know, you look up and you're an eight and eight, you know, eight win team or nine win team. That's, but the, the good teams are going to use this, use this game for, for their benefit. John Parker, I want to ask you about the 2007 season. That was just such a fascinating season to look back on. The team obviously faced a lot of adversity. It was a transition year for the program and that you had a new coach and Nick Saban. Uh, and and I just wonder, we, we all know how the team finished the season with the bowl win and went on to come together for an amazing 2008 season. But specifically, I wonder, what was the biggest lesson that you felt like you learned from the Louisiana Monroe game? Um, you know, the losing my road game, um, you know, probably not motivated enough, but I think, I think the theme throughout that season is we were close in a lot of games, right? We, we, we didn't, I don't, I don't remember the, the scores to all of them, but, but it, we, you know, we were, we were right in, in all of them. I know we lost to Georgia in overtime. Um, we lost to Auburn. It was really close. LSU, we had a chance to win it. Um, 
you know, it was it was a lot of close games that that I think we learned that year and took it took the bowl game. I think the bowl game was really productive for that for us that year. And we learned that the fourth quarter is really important. And you hear Coach Saban still preach it that, um, you know, games are won and lost in the fourth quarter. Like LSU, perfect example this week. They had plenty of chances in the fourth quarter, but our defense stood strong. I mean, they they, they couldn't have played any better um, there in the fourth quarter because they had plenty of chances. And we were able to convert it, and they weren't. So I think that 2007 season, we were close a lot. The next year, we took that learning process into the next season and learned how to convert those into wins and put people away and finish people out. Because I, I bet if we go back and look at that season, we were either up or, or really close to it in the fourth quarter and just didn't didn't know how to win yet. John Parker, I, I, I want to ask you before we wrap up here with you today about this year's team and your, you know, you, you've watched every second of them play. You've seen more than a lot of us, as you said. You, you get to see some practice sometimes. Um, you know, I, I think one of the things that I've been kind of bringing up repeatedly this season is I don't quite understand what this team's identity is yet. I can't really get my head around what they are yet, especially on offense. If you kind of had to sum up what what is this team – good at what is what is their kind of bread and butter that makes them a dangerous team heading into this final stretch of the season um you know what what how, how would you kind of boil it down yeah um you know on on D, I, I think i think it's athletes right i think i think we've got some really good players i think defense it's coming together and we're seeing that i mean we're seeing will anderson phil mathis has turned into a pretty big force up front um, we're, we're extremely deep at the secondary level, uh, you know, with, with Malachi and Brian Branch be able to come in with battle and, and DeMarco Hellams Kool-Aid came in this game, I think played really well, um, in a relief role for Josh Job, Jalen Armour Davis. There's a lot of guys on defense. And I think on offense, I think, you know, until this game, we were, we were a balanced team. Like we were in the past, we didn't have the huge playmakers, but now I think they're emerging. I mean, I think. Jamison Williams from the first game to now has gotten a ton better. I think Mechie has has gotten a ton better too. I mean, I think Williams is leading the SEC right now in receiving. Um, so we our playmakers are emerging. We don't have the 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 the, the you know four or five guys that are going to go out there at receiver and make plays. And you know Brian Robinson has to me has been a, a force on this team of 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 being hard nosed, tough. I think he's really evolved at a running back. He's gotten a lot better making people miss and, um, you know, doing a lot on his own up front. And, you know, I think he was averaging like six yards of carry before this last game. So it's just – it's not the sexiness that we've had the past couple of years, but I think this team was just, you know, instead of two and three play drives that resulted in a touchdown, we're seven, ten, twelve play drives that resulted in a touchdown. Still leading the SEC in points. I don't think we get enough – we give them enough credit for that. Um, still leading the points, it's just a different way. And it's not the home runs that we're used to. You know, we're hitting singles and doubles, and we're, we're still scoring nine runs a game. It's just not kind of, you know, hitting grand slams and, and everybody going crazy. You know, you look up, and I hear a lot of people say this, you look up and, damn, Bryce Young's thrown for 370 yards and four <laughs> touchdowns this game. It didn't feel like it, but he did. Um, and and I, I think, you know, our, our expectations are so high, as they should be. It's just we're doing it a different way than we have in the past. Sure. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it is what it is. Yeah. That, that 2020 team may have kind of warped, warped my brain no and everybody else's. Yeah. Hey, I've got one exactly. follow up to that. Cause, cause you mentioned Will Anderson and his impact on the game. I heard you talk about him earlier this week too. And you said, it's not fun when you have to focus on one guy game plan around him, bring personnel in to try to contain him. Who is a player like that that you remember from your playing days? Like one guy where you kind of couldn't believe that he was so individually disruptive. Yeah, I, I think it was Patrick Willis played at Ole Miss. Um, I mean, that guy, he, he you know, playing middle linebacker, he, a lot of times, like if you're playing a defensive end, like you can kind of, you can do some things to shield it, right? You can bring a tight end, but the guy in the middle of the field that can go sideline to sideline that can track down a tight end or even a receiver. And then I remember one play, I, I was, it was a handed it off, I think, to the left. I booted out to the, it was, no, handed the ball off to the right. I booted out to the left and we made eye contact. 
and he made the play for like a tackle for loss on the sidelines. And sure, there was some like probably a guy missed, but he was able to track that guy down. So when you have someone like that in the middle, a guy like Rolando McLean for Alabama back in the day, there's not a lot you can do um, because he's just he's going to out athlete you and and you know and be a force. Minka Fitzpatrick was like that for Alabama. Um, I kind of relate him to like a Troy Polamalu guy. I remember watching Troy Polamalu that could that could be in the middle of the field. He could he'd line up at linebacker or line up at safety. It's like you, you can't account for those guys. So when you get somebody like that, it's 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 a, it's it's tough. It's it's not fun. It's really not. You just you try to manage them, but you, you know you know pre snap where that guy's at at all times, and so do the other ten guys. Awesome. Wait, you know John Parker. It, it's it, we, we've talked about before. Uh, you, you and I used to do our used to do our show on AL.com or oh, yeah. break on film every week. I love hearing you continue to do that on the radio every week at, at these games. It's really fun hearing you do that. And uh, we got to we got to get you we got to get you on the show in the off season at some point again, man. Because we, we we need we we need some more stories. We need some more flashback stories from John Parker's playing days. We got plenty of them. We can definitely do it. You just let me know when. <laughs> we'll do it. All right. Well, thank you, John Parker, for joining us this week. Thanks uh, once again to our sponsors from the Mercedes-Benz Tech Program. And for Ben Flanagan, I'm Matt Scalise. We'll see you guys again next week. And everybody have a great weekend, whether you're in Tuscaloosa or watching from home. Thanks again, everybody. This show is presented by the Mercedes-Benz Tech Program. To learn more about Mercedes-Benz's world of advanced automotive technology, text the word mercedes to 55678 or visit www.learnmercedes.com.